Good morning, happy day 16. Today in your advent calendar, you've got a brand new product, something we've never done before. This is our stuffing mix for the year. Absolutely delicious, cranberry, walnut, and herbs, so yum. And this is gonna make stuffing your chicken or your Christmas turkey really, really easy. So we've put together the jar, and what we did was we actually kept it gluten-free to make sure that um, it's suitable for everyone. So what you wanna do is you start by emptying the jar into a bowl. Look at that, absolutely stunning. Smells incredible. Garlic, onion, cranberry, walnut, spices. And then we thought we would let people add their own bread. So if you're gluten-free, add gluten-free bread, or if you've got anyone gluten-free at Christmas, which is like highly likely these days. So you're just gonna use a couple of slices of gluten-free bread. I've got buns here, uh, but we just wanna tear that all up really fine and add that to your bowl. Preheat your oven to 180 before you get your hands messy. And into here, we're gonna add one teaspoon of either mangrind or your spit roast flakes. Two eggs and 70 grams of butter to bind that, melted. All right, so you're gonna mix that all up. Now the cool thing about stuffing is if you're vegetarian, you can just roll this into balls and roast it with your veggies, potato, carrots, kumara, just roll up your stuffing balls and make a beautiful big roast veggie with stuffing instead of the meats. We're gonna do a chicken today. Here, I feel like that's the most common thing. I don't know how many Kiwis actually do a turkey at Christmas. So we've got our beautiful roast chicken here. Make sure you don't buy the one that's already got stuffing in it. Right, take our stuffing and we are gonna get it in this cavity here. We'll give them a rinse first. Beautiful stuffing, that's how much your jar makes, so plenty. Enough to do a turkey if you are. Get them in. Do a few balls on the side to show you what they look like too. Okay, now we want to rub your stuffed chook with more melted butter and give them a really good season with either mangrind or your spit roast flakes. Make sure you cover that whole chook. I really like to get some down under the breast skin there too. You can use cold butter if you want. Right, now we're gonna tie them up so that the stuffing doesn't explode out. I wasn't paying attention in chef school when they taught us how to truss a chicken, so I just go, I just wrap them up basically in my twine. <laughs> I start from the bottom, come under the wings there. Actually, we wanna pull the wings in, don't we? Over the wings, under the legs, and then I crisscross there. And you could just tie the legs together. So mine's very simple, I just try and pin the wings down and tie the legs together. What a terrible instruction video. Cute wee bow. A beautiful wee parcel with his legs showing so and shut. Okay, so take a nice roasting dish. You don't want it too big, you don't want it too small. And then I like to just have the chicken slightly elevated off the bottom so it doesn't stew at the bottom. So you can use a potato or an onion and just make it a little platform with a couple of potato slices. So when we pop the chicken on here, he's just not gonna be stewing in his juices, and that's perfect. I've just got those three stuffing balls at the end there. They won't take as long to cook as the chook. Just pull them out after about 20 minutes. So just give it a final check. Make sure you've got plenty of seasoning all over that chook. I think mine needed a little bit more. I hit them hard. There we go, look at that, delicious. We're popping them in the oven at 180 for 100 minutes. In he goes, isn't he beautiful? Here we go, we've got our beautiful stuffing balls. I pulled these out after 30 minutes and I actually made up another mix of the stuffing to show you what one jar of the stuffing mixture would look like as balls as a dish on its own. They'd be really cute with like roast veggies and nice gravy as well for a cool vegetarian Christmas dish. Uh, and then we've got our beautiful chooky. So I actually roasted this for 10 minutes less than the recipe. It was ready, it was perfectly cooked at that point. So that's my bad. It is quite a small one though. So you'll just have to, hopefully you've got a thermometer or just go off your intuition. <laughs> <laughs> they're all going to be different sizes, so there really is always going to be an element of checking. Okay, so you should definitely save all those juices at the bottom there, make a beautiful gravy, and see how those potatoes have just lifted the bottom of the chicken out of the liquid there. Time to carve it. So let's take the truss off. So you start with the legs, and we remove that leg, you just make one cut, and then you snap the leg off, and the whole leg should be come off beautifully like that and then you just want to separate this into the drumstick and the thigh so we just want one little cut in between those bones there try and keep all the skin nicely on and then we've got a drumstick and a thigh get the wing off next wingling he just snaps off too <laughs> you actually don't really need to use the knife much for this portioning the chicken and then breast to slice off the breast you just cut in between the breast here and then just follow the breast plate down along the bone scraping all the meat away from the bone like so there should be almost nothing left on there and then that also should just snap away from that bone so we've got one lovely whole breast there and then we cut this in half try and keep the skin on so that is five your five portions from half of the chicken we've got beautiful half 
big juicy breast, the leg, the thigh and the wing and that so you get 10 portions from your one shook plus all the delicious stuffing. That's what you end up with, your beautiful plate, portioned juicy roast chicken and stuffing. Yum, pop some rosemary on top of that to garnish it and make a beautiful gravy if you like with that sauce, can't beat it.